You're a professional mathematician? Yeah. Tell me what you love most about math. Okay, so I fully accept that uh, most people's experience of math at school was uh, maybe traumatizing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I, I accept that. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I think that the, the math that you learn at school is different from how it feels to be a real mathematician. For me, doing math, it's like a, a, a portal to a playground for the soul. Like, that's the best way that I can describe it. Because what you're learning when you're in school is like all the building blocks that you need to be able to, I don't know, to, to finally sing with the subject. Um, there was once somebody described it as um, doing really, really high level math. It's as though you are kind of burrowing through this really thick brush and you can't see where you're going. It's like thicket and, and leaves everywhere. And then you turn a corner and in a moment you realise that you're in this beautifully manicured garden where everything is laid out just perfectly and you're there discovering it. No one's been there before you and that's really, I think, how it feels. You can suddenly see everywhere that you've been before and all of the places that you struggled. You're so passionate about it. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, I heard that you have math tips to help find love. Uh, yeah. Tell us a, a couple. <laughs> okay, so here's my theory, right? My theory is that you can apply a, a mathematical way of thinking mm -hmm. to basically everything, right? That's, that's, that's my theory. And so I... Um, you know, as a mathematician, right, when I was dating, I obviously tried to optimise my own dating life. I tried to use my, my superpower in uh -huh. order to, uh, to get the best possible partner. Um, and so I, I put it all together because I kind of wanted to prove, right, that even when you have something like love, which feels very far away from equations, mm -hmm. even in that situation, you have patterns in the, the number of people that you date in your lifetime, you have patterns in which photographs do well on, you know, internet dating profiles. And all of that you can you can look at through a mathematical eye. Y'all following it? <laughs> oh my God! Okay, what other math tips do you have for relationships? Okay, so one of the good ones um, that you can look at is how many people you should date before you decide to settle down. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, there is actually a way to do this mathematically and work out the best possible strategy, right? So, what you should do, uh -huh. in theory, is uh, you should say, right, let's say you start dating when you're about 15, in, okay. in seriousness, and you want to be settled down by the time you're 35, say. What you should do is, for the first 37% of your dating life, you should just basically reject everybody. <laughs> 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 Don't take anyone too seriously, have a nice time, you know, just like get to know yourself and the world. And then after that time period has passed, right, after that 37% of the time has passed, then to settle down, you should pick the next person who comes along that is better than everyone that you've seen before. And if you do that, you can mathematically prove it that this is the optimal way to, uh, to end up with the chances of finding the best partner. Oh, wow. I mean, now, OK. <laughs> this, is a, this is a theory that comes with caveats, though, Jennifer. I'm sorry, like, it doesn't work every single time. OK. I mean, there's risks involved here. It is. OK, so it, the, one of the big risks is that imagine if your absolute perfect partner appeared in that first 37% when you were kind of playing the field, right? When you're, like, 21 years old, the perfect match for you was there. If you're following this theory, then you just got to reject them out of sight, right? You can't, you can't have them. Um, and that says you've got to get rid of them and then you'll never be able to get them back. So, I mean, there, there are risks involved. OK. <laughs> this is so different and interesting, seeing it from a mathematical <laughs> perspective. I don't think we've... Anybody else seen it that way? No? Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> if you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.